Fresh Florida strawberries, only $5.99 for a one-pound package. Fresh Purdue chicken thighs or drumsticks, only $1.99 per pound. DiGiorno pizzas, 12 inches, hot price, $8 each. Blue Bonnet margin sticks, one-pound box, only $1.69. Ajax 2X laundry detergent, 50-ounce bottle, only $5.69. All stores open Monday through Saturday from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Sunday 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. for your shopping convenience. You can count on us. Live from Bermuda Broadcasting, this is ZBN TV 9 News. Good evening, everyone. It's Friday, February the 9th, 2018. I'm Diane Brewer, and thank you for joining us tonight. Walton Brown, Jr., the Minister of Home Affairs, gave comment today at the House of Assembly on the governor's assent to the domestic partnerships bill. The minister introduced the bill, which was intended to replace same-sex marriage in Bermuda last year. Gary Moreno asked how the decision sat with the minister, given his personal support of same-sex marriage. I am speaking to you as a government minister. We deliberate, we come to positions, and we execute our positions. How difficult was that to marry that with your personal beliefs? I don't have a personal position when I speak to you as minister. My position is a matter of public record, but we did this as a compromise piece of legislation. There's been a lot of pushback from the international community with regard to this thing that Bermuda was the first country or is among the few countries in the world to implement or accept same-sex marriages mm -hmm. only to turn it over. Mm -hmm. See that having any negative impact on this country or having any impact at all on Bermuda? Well, clearly any international tension is, that's negative, we don't welcome, obviously. Uh, but we are a government of laws. And this legislature, which is the duly elected body to pass laws, passed the first piece of legislation providing a, right, a range of civil rights and, and political rights for same-sex couples. However, Minister Brown does expect the overall views on homosexual relationships to change over time. This bill was passed. It, became, it will become law because of the nature of the view, views expressed in this country today. I don't expect that those views will remain the views in Bermuda. I believe that in due course we will see a very different outlook in terms of how the community embraces same-sex marriage. What do you say to the sectors of the community that have expressed, well, disgust almost at that decision? As I said to you, Gary, this bill was passed in December. The fact that you want to raise it again befuddles me. If you believe that it was so important to wait until now after the governor has given his assent to debate it, then maybe you need to ask the governor these questions. Meantime, traditional marriage lobbyists Preserve Marriage have expressed their gratitude for the governor's approval of the Domestic Partnership Act, thereby reversing same-sex marriage law. They congratulate lawmakers on being the first country in the world to do so. Jasmine Patterson has more. The group says they're thankful for the decision to reverse the law on same-sex marriage in Bermuda and thank all who supported their campaign efforts over the past two years to ensure the definition of marriage remains between a man and a woman. Governor John Rankin gave assent to the controversial Domestic Partnership Act on Wednesday, drawing ire from international human rights groups and a UK MP, Chris Bryant. Although it does not condone any legal union which may provide legal footing for same-sex marriage, they add we do wish to commend the government on being the first and only government in the world to reverse the laws. Further, they add we recognize the European Court of Human Rights position that the European Convention on Human Rights does not impose an obligation on a government to grant a same-sex couple access to marriage, adding they acknowledge that the Domestic Partnership Act satisfies the requirement of the European Court of Human Rights to recognize same-sex relationships. I don't really have any views. <laughs> Honestly, I'm a little bit embarrassed. Um, and especially seeing as now it's like it's on the world stage. So that's a... Uh, it's tough. I don't. I probably shouldn't speak too much about it because it's a, a topic I'm kind of passionate about. It's an embarrassment for Bermuda on an international scale. Well, I'm happy for the fact that the people are still able to express themselves openly and they're not judged by that. And I'm also happy that they're not putting it onto the public to make it also acceptable for younger kids who can easily be influenced for their choices later in life. So for the people that make that choice, I'm happy for them. They, have, they can do that in private. And for the people that are um, trying to keep their kids on a different path, it's good for them as well because, you know, it's giving them their privacy. You know, it gives the kids the right way, you know? In the Bible, it doesn't show you man and man. It shows Adam and Eve. So that's the way that I live by. So the kids should be sharing that way too. 
Winston Godwin de Roche, the gay partner of a Canadian man whose Supreme Court case resulted in legalized gay marriage, says the issue isn't dead despite the governor's approval of domestic partnerships. Mr. Godwin de Roche told Archer I Trot the law as it stands has caused further division in an already, already divided country. I think it's, it's not surprising, um, absolutely, um, in the slightest. I think that um, the governor was put in a very difficult position um, and it's unfortunate um, as it is but it's not surprising do you think the fight for same-sex marriage is over um, absolutely not <laughs> um, because same-sex marriage here is not legal again <laughs> so as there's still work to be done obviously there's still things that um, while this is I guess the end for now um, there's still work to be done. There's still progress that can be made. Couples should um, be able to be married here under the law. What do you make of the publicity the island is getting overseas? I've read a couple of the articles and things like that, and it is quite concerning for sure. It's unfortunate that this issue is getting that negative attention. Um, however, it's also positive that attention is being brought to the issue. Now, Chris Bryan, the Labour MP in Britain, said the reversal of same-sex marriage makes previously married gay couples an anomaly. Do you feel like an anomaly? I wouldn't say we're an anomaly. I think that it does create further division within an already divided community, for sure. You've got this this tiered system now, so you've got couples that have been married under the law and will have their rights, I guess, recognized as such. And now you've got another level of that to those couples that have come after um, the offense been given um, with the introduction of this domestic partnership bill um, that will have domestic partnerships. And Bermuda's decision to ban gay marriage has had a knock-on effect around the world overseas media reporting that gay couples with no plans on visiting the island are finding themselves impacted by Bermuda's domestic partnership law. We get this report from the BBC's Jonathan Savage. Put simply, cruise ships take the company that runs the Cunard and P&O cruise lines. Carnival UK has a head office in the UK, but their ships are registered in Bermuda and subject to Bermudan law. Why? Well, one of the reasons is to allow them to conduct weddings at sea, which is something British law doesn't allow. Now, they wanted to conduct same-sex marriages for some time, and last year the Bermudan Supreme Court legalised same-sex marriage. It was all systems go. But yesterday, the governor of Bermuda approved a law repealing that decision, which ended the plans of any gay couples who'd booked a wedding at sea. I've been in touch with Carnival UK. They say they're very unhappy about the decision, um, and while they can't offer legal same-sex marriages anymore, they are offering a commitment ceremony or a renewal of vows, and also offering refunds to anyone who'd booked. And this has also led to criticism for the British government. Yeah, people who support same-sex marriage in the UK say the UK should have used its right to veto the change in the law because it's a British territory, Bermuda. In other news, Bermuda Winter Olympian Dr. Tucker Murphy turned heads during the opening ceremony of the Winter Olympic Games in South Korea. Earl Basden has more about the ceremony that took place this morning. It was not the first time the delegation from Bermuda had worn bright red shorts for the opening ceremony of an Olympics, and not the first time that cross-country skier Dr. Tucker Murphy had caused a stir with them. It was, however, the first time that the Bermuda shorts made an appearance in temperatures that dipped just below zero degrees Celsius at the Pyeongchang Olympic Stadium. With just about every other country walking the Parade of Nations walkway dressed warmly, it was not so for Murphy, who will compete in the men's 15K cross-country skiing competition on Sunday morning at 2.15 a.m. Bermuda time. I'm Earl Baisden with Bermuda Broadcasting News. And Earl will have more on today's Olympic coverage later on in the Sports Report. Stay with us. More news in tonight's AccuWeather forecast after the break. Price Rate is your one-stop shop with something for everyone. Household goods for kitchen, bedroom, and bathroom. Aisles of bulk groceries at value prices. A complete selection of fresh meat and produce. And an extensive range of frozen items to cover every meal. Wines from around the world and beer and liquor at discount prices. Visit Price Right at our two locations in Pembroke and Warren. There's always something new and always something for everyone.
the whole concept came from uh, the collaboration with the FNM and the America's Cup. The Endeavour programme is the legacy of the 35th America's Cup that was here in Bermuda in June. And we've continued the, the charity now operating in Bermuda. And going forward, we thought, what a great opportunity for children on the autism spectrum. And hence, we actually developed the No Limits programme. They really do benefit from this kind of outdoor experience, this environment, you know, just yesterday going off the east end of Bermuda. I mean, they wouldn't have done that. Not many children in Bermuda have done that. And just them learning to take control of a, a large bit of um, transportation that they're doing at that age. And they, they may never get that opportunity. That's where you see the biggest progress is. Whether they were looking at their hand steering, you know, it's, now they're looking forward and actually looking where they're going. Because they've realized, oh, I know where my hand is. I can, I can do this without looking at my hands. We are so grateful for the Endeavor program and what it has done for these students on the autism spectrum. Welcome back. Approval will be sought from the Senate for the Joint Select Committee set up to look into events which occurred during the airport protests on December the 2nd, 2016. Former Premier Michael Dunkley, who was requested to provide information to the JSC, questioned its constitutionality and makeup. Speaker Dennis Lister telling members while the setting up of this JSC was done in accordance with set precedents, he will take the necessary steps to ensure that it is in keeping with the dictates of the Parliament Act and the standing orders of the House of Assembly. Taking into consideration the seriousness of this particular Joint Select Committee, and we want that Select Committee to be able to have full authority to do the fact-finding that is required for this particular matter, I'm going to follow the letter of the law. I've already spoken to the President of the Senate, and I've informed her that this will follow into her house, in, into the other chamber. Can you just re refer to that here? But it will go to the other chamber for approval through the other chamber as, a, as it was in this house, just so that that particular Joint Select Committee will then be unquestionable about its constitutionality. The reason I'm doing that is that I don't want to leave room for any member, any person, to be able to question whether they should or should not respond to a request of that Joint Select Committee. I expect all members, all persons, who are requested to come before that committee, to come before the committee in the spirit of full participation. I take the word of the member who brought the matter to the public's attention this week, who indicated that he's quite prepared to participate in any fully constituted Joint Select Committee's request for his presence or his, his participation. So I'm gonna hold the member to his word that this will be unquestionably done in a manner that removes any question about his constitutionality, and I expect him to set the standard for all other persons who are called before it by fully participating. I'm going to hold him to his word. And Mr. Lister reiterating his dissatisfaction that the letter from Mr. Dunkley communicating his concerns were made public before he had sight of them and was not good practice and will not be tolerated. I'm sure as we proceed in this parliament, there will be times when members of this house may feel indifferent to a position that the speaker takes, and you have that right. But I also respect that there is a process in which you express that. If you have a difference of opinion or a position that the speaker has taken or something that's been done in this house, I operate under fairness. My door is open at any time and all time to any member of this house. Any member, no matter which political affiliation you are, feel free to call on this speaker when you may feel that there's been a position taken that you disagree with. However, let me clearly state, because there's two distinct differences here. Any letter, any document, any correspondence that's addressed to this speaker comes to this speaker. It does not go in the public domain. It doesn't belong in the public domain. It's not acceptable and will not be tolerated by this speaker. Let's be clear on that. Meanwhile, Mr. Dunkley welcomed the position as expressed by the speaker. I've always had a very good relationship with the speaker, even though we sit on um, opposite sides of the aisle. Uh, and I'm pleased that um, he has reflected now on the contents of the letter. Um, he was very clear today that he believed that there was precedent before where joint select committees weren't passed by either house. Um, I haven't researched back in there, but uh, it was clear to me that in the Parliament Act and also the standing orders, they had to go to, to either house. And, and um, I fully support the position of the speaker and, and uh, respect him um, coming to that decision because we're looking at a very contentious
year, where their views uh, from every different quarter on it, and they're very emotive. And I think it's important, uh, being that the case, that we make sure that the uh, I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. And I'm sure that um, the motion will be um, pretty simple in the Senate. Um, the motion um, just ask for a joint select committee to be set up. It doesn't get into the details of, of that day. Uh, we got carried away in the House of Assembly. Uh, many members spoke on it. Um, I didn't speak that day because uh, it was to set up the Joint Select Committee. And um, my colleagues and I supported the setting up that committee because why wouldn't we? We're open and transparent about everything we have done. We're willing to answer any questions, so of course we set it up. But we didn't need to have the debate on the floor that night. Um, so I look forward to uh, it passing in the Senate um, at their first meeting, and I look forward to the opportunity to attend and to uh, answer any questions they might have and provide some information that they might not have as well. Turning to weather news, a partly sunny weekend in store for us. Here's the latest from AccuWeather headquarters. AccuWeather is presented by BFNM Insurance Group. We now go to AccuWeather headquarters. The BFNM Insurance Group is pleased to bring you tonight's AccuWeather forecast. I'm AccuWeather meteorologist Brittany Boyer, and well, we've had some cool temperatures late this afternoon, but it looks like temperatures will be rebounding as we head into this weekend. So what we've had going on, frontal boundary working its way away from us, but uh, still in its wake, we could have a spotty shower or two this evening. We do have a small craft warning in place through this evening. So there's still some choppy and rough conditions out there on the water. But looking at the current conditions right now on the island here, those temperatures cooling off in the 60s and we're looking at humidity at 90 percent this evening. Winds are out of the northeast 10 to 20 knots, but we'll see that wind direction shifting uh, as we head into this weekend. So temperatures again will be rebounding. The water temperature currently sitting at 66 degrees. Waves inside the reef between one and three feet and outside of the reef right now between five and eight feet. So again, if you have any kind of plans on heading out on the water, just know that that small craft warning is still in place through this evening. And temperatures compared to where they are now to where they're going tonight, not going to fluctuate a whole lot here. Breezy this evening, partly cloudy, still can't rule out a passing shower or two, but uh, a drying trend is going to be with us as we head right into the weekend. So if you have any big plans of uh, being outdoors for tomorrow, we get into the low 70s. So if Feeling pretty nice here in Hamilton on Saturday. Clouds and sunshine should be nice and dry and not quite as breezy as what we've experienced for today. A low of 67 degrees as we head into your Saturday night and also into Sunday morning. So, Marine Alerts, you know that you have that small craft warning in place right now expiring this evening unless they decide to allow that to continue overnight tonight. Your tidal time's right there on the bottom of your screen. Low tide 1 coming in just before 10 o'clock tonight and high tide 1 coming in just before 5 a.m. on Saturday. So I hope you have a great weekend. Perhaps you're doing a little bit of traveling. Well, this is the forecast for a few other destinations. In Toronto, Canada, they're looking at some snow for tomorrow. Temperatures in the 20s. New York City, well above normal temperatures, getting close to 50 degrees. We should push into the 50s in Boston. So pretty warm on the East Coast, even warm in the Southeast, but with periods of rain around Atlanta. Some of the islands are dealing with those trade winds right now, blowing in some showers, also some rough conditions on the water, especially down here in the Windward Islands, but temperatures right now are nice and warm. Your extended forecast over the next couple of days, no big troublemakers, uh, or at least for the next five days here. Uh, drying things out Saturday, clouds and sunshine into Sunday. Temperatures will be sent, uh, staying in the low 70s here. A shower can't be ruled out on Monday, and then our next front will be coming in the middle of of next week. We'll send it back to you. AccuWeather was presented by BFNM Insurance Group. Your home, your life, security. Be fire and burglar free. Right from your phone, monitor control. Lock safe, doors case, business family safe. You're on the go. And that's okay. BSG with you every day. Bermuda Security Group, your security, life safety, and monitoring experts. We're with you every step of the way. Bermuda Security Group, BSG.BM. Are you required to take one or more medications daily but have a hard time remembering when to take them? 
Does your family fear you may end up in the hospital because you often forget to take your meds? Or are you a caregiver looking for a time management tool designed to make your medication routine effortless? The Phoenix Doors can help. With an MDS blister pack, a multi-dose packaging system that makes it easier to manage and take your medication. Each MDS blister pack contains medications for the week and is pre-packed, sealed and labeled by a pharmacist. Prescriptions grouped by the day and the time of day you should take them. Whether at breakfast, lunch, dinner or bedtime. Plus, to ensure you're covered, each pack includes detailed, personalized instruction. Take confidence in knowing you're using your medications as the doctor planned. Visit the Phoenix stores to chat with the pharmacist and get your MDS blister pack today. The Phoenix stores, for a better life. Now here's Earl Basden with tonight's sports report. Bermuda's flag was on display earlier today as the opening ceremony of the Winter Olympic Games took place this morning. Dr. Tucker Murphy braved the wintry conditions to keep a tradition alive, sporting Bermuda shorts while taking part in the Parade of Nations at the opening ceremony of the 2018 Winter Olympic Games in Pyeongchang, South Korea. With athletes from other countries dressed mostly in warm winter gear given the chilly temperatures, the ceremony included a large display of the Bermuda flag covering the infield of the stadium. Also braving the conditions for the opening ceremony, ceremony was his coach, Pata Milucheva, as well as Chef de Mission, Mike Murphy. The rest of the Bermuda contingent includes assistant coach and waxer, Jeff Shaw, as well as Sean Fielerman, who is the representative of the executive board of the Bermuda Olympic Association. Bermuda's Paralympian Jessica Lewis will be at the Washington Mall tomorrow, Saturday, from 11 to 1 for a meet and greet with her new coach, Curtis Tom, who is the son of her former coach, Ken Tom, who passed away last year. And then the next day on Sunday, Lewis and Tom will join riders as they take part in the Paddle for Paralympics event. Riders will get underway at 9.45 at the clock tower at the Royal Naval Dockyard and finish at Ferry Reach. Cyclists taking up the challenge will support the Bermuda Paralympics Association's bid to raise funds enabling Bermuda's elite para-athletes to compete abroad at the World Championships, para Pan Am Games, and the Paralympics. The ride should take approximately two to two and a half hours, with Lewis and Tom joining in along Kinley Field. The Bermuda Olympic Association officially announced the names of the athletes and officials who will represent Bermuda at the upcoming Commonwealth Games in Gold Coast, Australia. Bermuda will have eight athletes competing in four disciplines as follows. In athletics, Tyler Butterfield, Trey Houston, Tyrone Smith, and Kyle Webb will compete. Flora Duffy will compete in cycling, while Micah Franklin will compete in squash. In triathlon, it'll be Tyler Butterfield, Flora Duffy, Erica Hawley, and Tyler Smith. Bermuda's chef, Demisio for the games is Ketura Horton Parenti. Bermuda's FIFA-listed referee Tashan Simons took part in a Jamaica Premier League football match last evening that saw Arnett Gardens and the Humble Lions end at 2-2. Vanessa James and her partner Morgan Cypress began competing in the Pyeongchang Winter Olympic Games. Prior to the opening ceremony, the pair represented France in the team event pair skating short program and finished sixth with a score of 68.49. Over 600 runners took part in the 2018 Bermuda School Sports Federation's Primary School Cross Country Championships at the National Sports Center yesterday. Carly Daly was the first to enter the stadium in the under nine girls division. The Harrington Sound primary student comfortably won by 14 seconds with a time of 9.59. Amaris Munya from Purvis Primary finished second in 10.13, while West End Primary's Markela Swan rounded out the top three finishes with a time of 10.16. Soltis claimed all three podium spots in the under nine boys race. Connor Hopman led the way with a time of 9.46. He was followed closely by Declan Reardon in 9.47 and Tom Hyland finished third in 9.48. Somerset Primaries Jada Grant crossed the line first in the over nine girls race before any competitor entered the gates of the stadium. Second place went to Elise Dickinson from Somersville Academy with a time of 10.48. Front Street Mile champion Legend Stevenson from West End Primary claimed the bronze. West End Primaries Jason Donawa won the over nine boys race in the closest contest in recent memory. Work Academy's Nyan Grant entered the stadium first and held a slight lead until the final steps of the race where Donawa surged ahead to nip him at the line for first place. Kari Sharif from Elliott Primary finished in third in this thrilling race. 
Bermuda squash professional Noah Brown competed in the $5,000 men's EM No Classic in Philadelphia, taking on the seventh seed, Saheed Hakari from Pakistan in the first round. Brown would go down 3 to 1 in 67 minutes. He would lose the battle 11 3, 11 8, 4 11, 11 8. Denali Bowen and his Thomas College men's track and field teammates had a strong showing at the Bowden Invitational. Bowen had a strong day as he ended up third in the triple jump, sixth in the 60 meter dash final, and sixth in long jump. In the men's 60 meter dash preliminaries, Bowen would finish fifth, clocking a time of 7.53, qualified him for the final. In the final, Bowen finished sixth, stopping the clock in a time of 7.54. With a leap of 6.32 meters, Bowen would finish sixth in the men's long jump. He would finish third in the men's triple jump with a top leap of 12.39 meters. James Finnegan and his Florida Institute of Technology men's tennis teammates aced their first test of the season as they earned an impressive 9-0 win over Gustav Adolphus College. Already ahead 1-0 in the doubles, Richard Corona and Finnegan were next to hit the court and they would smash their opponents to the tune of 8-3. Florida Institute of Technology carried that momentum onto the singles with Finnegan playing in the second spot for the team and he would earn a straight set 6-2, 6-1 win over his opponent. I'm Earl Basden with Bermuda Broadcasting Sports. You can count on us. Your choice of potatoes, five pound bag, only $4.49. Fresh certified Angus beef, high round roast, only $5.99 per pound. Grace corned beef, 12 ounce tin, only $3.49. Rango pasta sauce, 24 ounce jar, hot price, only $2.79. Old time honey wheat sliced bread, 20 ounce loaf, hot price of only $3.99. All stores open Monday through Saturday from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. for your shopping convenience. You can count on us. The whole concept came from the collaboration with the FNM and the America's Cup. The Endeavour programme is the legacy of the 35th America's Cup that was here in Bermuda in June. And we've continued the, the charity now operating in Bermuda. And going forward, we thought, what a great opportunity for children on the autism spectrum. And hence, we actually developed the No Limits programme. They really do benefit from this kind of outdoor experience, this environment. You know, just yesterday, going off the east end of Bermuda, I mean, they wouldn't have done that. Not many children in Bermuda have done that. And just them learning to take control of a, a large bit of um, transportation that they're doing at that age. And they, they may never get that opportunity. That's where you see the biggest progress is. Whether they were looking at their hand steering, you know, it's, now they're looking forward and actually looking where they're going. Because they've realized, oh, I know where my hand is. I can, I can do this without looking at my hand. We are so grateful for the Endeavor program and what it has done for these students on the autism spectrum. The National Trust has commemorated the first woman to give an account of her life as a slave, Mary Prince. A plaque was unveiled earlier this week near her former home at School Lands Cottages in Pembroke. Our reporter Hal Davis was there. It's a house with a history. This building is where Mary Prince lived in the early 19th century after being sold at the age of 12 and separated from her family. Her famous book, The History of Mary Prince, mentions one occasion when she was lashed a hundred times after breaking a pot. Covered in bruises and blood, she lay outside this house all night before being forced back to work. For those who've also lived here, the sense of history is almost palpable. You can smell it, you can feel it, you can sense it. And just to let people know that this woman did fight on our behalf. I think she did a, um, a service to the country and many other uh, countries. Near the scene of that beating, the National Trust commemorated Mary Prince with Bishop Vernon Lamb unveiling a plaque in her honour. Journalist Meredith Ebbin played a key role in reviving interest in Mary Prince in Bermuda. She's the only first person account that we have of slavery in Bermuda. And, and so that's unique about it. Um, and the fact that she's female, she, she, she cast a light on what it's like to be female. I mean, she would have been subject to sexual abuse, uh, which was sanitized in the book. But we, we could, you can read between the lines and see that she was not only brutalized, but sexually abused. I would she was likely even raped. The power of that story played a vital role in changing attitudes towards slavery in Britain. Prince's book was republished three times within 12 months, and just two years later, in 1833, slavery was abolished in the British Empire. Her account, 
widely credited with helping speed the end of the trade, one that denied men and women their essential humanity. Howell Davis, Bermuda Broadcasting News. That's our newscast for tonight. I'm Diane Brewer. Thanks for joining us. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Good night.